So I'm very happy to be in Europe because I can use my English with a French accent and nobody's going to be shocked, so this is great. Um, so I've been in the IT monitoring space for the last 17 years, and, um, and so I've been dealing with monitoring both as a buyer and now as a, as a seller. And uh, so what I want to talk about is how things have not changed sometimes. And so performance is still paramount, and it has no boundaries. I mean, the fact that we are here in Europe, and we, I don't know how many countries are here today represented, talking about where performance is amazing. One of the other things that, that is key is really how do we bridge the gap between IT and, th uh, IT and business. So uh, I hear that a lot in the States. I don't know about here, but oh, when well, the business guys want to put more features, more tags, more this, more that, but it has an impact on performance. So performance is important and is the responsibility of everyone, not just us on the IT side. So you can go back to them. Uh, when you get back home, and you can tell them, well, there is a new P in the performance, in the marketing mix, and that P is performance. Performance is paramount, and it's a, it's a, it's a business differentiator. If I cannot get on site A, I will go on site B. So you can go back and take that to them. So I don't know if you heard, but in the US, we spent about $400 million on a website that couldn't handle about 1,000 users. And the good thing is, you know, w Velocity started, what, a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago? And, but we are out of the closet. So performance is being talked about even in the media. So I can't wait for the Guignol de l'Info in France to make jokes about a, a slow website in France at some point. So that's coming too. The problem, as you know, you've attended a few of these slides, a few of these conferences, you've heard is things are getting more complex and performance, unfortunately, is a little bit outside of our control. So these are the waters we all have to uh, navigate. And things are getting more complex. Uh, we're just hearing about some problems in China blocking a major CDN provider a few days ago. So things are just getting more complex. Uh, government's interference, uh, latency, peering issues. Uh, we have this debate. I don't know if it's happening in Europe yet, but in the US, we have this whole net neutrality debate about how to limit bandwidth and, and peering agreements between ISPs. So things are getting more complex, and all these icebergs can actually impact your, your job, which is delivering great performance to the, your end users. And if you're in Armenia, this woman made your life miserable a few years ago. She cut off the internet looking for copper. So anyway, so a lot of things can impact performance, right? That's basically the key message. So how do you, how do you monitor this beast uh, that I've been dealing with for the past few decades now is you need a lot of tools, right? You need external monitoring, you need your, your, your internal monitoring, you need your business metrics, et cetera, et cetera. And all these things are really here to help you get a better picture of that beast, of that problem, which is performance and how to, to deal with it. So what I want to share with you uh, today is really some, some, some examples of bad things we've seen over the, over the years. And one of them is DNS. So the first thing that your end user deals with or experience is actually your DNS uh, domain, looking up the www.xyz.com. And so when you, when you use a DNS provider, if you use your own, just make sure that you don't do certain mistakes. One of them is using a, an, a provider, whether it's a CDN company or a DNS provider that is using Anycast, which makes things faster versus like the old way of doing DNS lookups, very, very, very slow. So two to three times slower. I mean, our users are worldwide. Your users are worldwide. There is no such thing as, well, my customers are only in France or my customers are only in Germany. You have, you have German folks living in Beijing that are going to come and visit your German website. You need to provide great DNS performance. Another thing that we hear a lot and we see a lot is, well, DNS is, is, has no impact on the end user performance. I hear that so often. I have four authoritative name servers, two are down. There is no impact to the end user, I promise you. Well, actually, there is. So these are measurements that were taken from last mile. So these are people's home uh, that we're monitoring. And you can see that, uh, well, when, when the authoritative name servers are not reached, there is a DNS impact. There is a performance impact. So DNS is very critical. I urge you to go back and do some tests to make sure that your DNS infrastructure is working. The network. Um, so 
I don't know how many of you have children, but sometimes when I take them with me on a road trip, it's like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Well, same thing, right? So we rely on so many layers uh, of network complexity to deliver the content from your servers that are hosted in some data center to the end user. You have the backbone providers, you have the last mile, and some of these guys sometimes don't talk very well to each other, or they try to pressure each other to buy more bandwidth at a higher cost or whatnot. So there is, a, there, there, is a, there is an impact. Bandwidth matters, obviously, so the size of the pipe, and then obviously the peering between all these carriers is very important. So this is an example where on the top what you have is latency from a web response perspective. At the bottom you have ping round trip time. And as you can see, as the ping round trip time increases throughout the day, what you end up having is actually slower web performance. So round trip time is very important. Ilya talked a lot about this from Google. So this is an example of, in the US at least, in the East Coast, there was this big congestion point in New York, between New York and DC, and you know, a lot of, a lot of you are probably hosting stuff on Amazon <laughs> on the East Coast, right? So there, were, there was a huge peering problem between some of the big carriers, level three, cogent, et cetera, and then suddenly the problem disappeared, but that caused a lot of performance issues during critical business hours. Mobile is very important. We all hear about mobile. I'm sure everybody is asking you, hey, what's, our, what's your mobile strategy? Well, one of the things about mobile is actually a lot more things are outside of our control. One of them the, is the access to the end user network, right? So there is, if, if, uh, if uh, I don't know, if uh, Vodafone is having problems in Madrid right now, you're not going to be running around distributing new phones on another carrier to all your end user. It doesn't work that way. So the mobile network's actually very strained and capacity has a lot of uh, uh, impact on the response time. This is an example uh, where we measured Google.com from New York, in New York, um, using 4G networks. And what you see is the flat line. That happened during Memorial Weekend. I guess nobody was allowed to use their phone that day, right? And the next weekend, which is the other flat line that you have on the far right, is better, but still not as good as the Memorial Weekend where literally nobody was using the, the wireless networks. Infrastructure. So this is obviously a very simplistic picture of how your infrastructure looks. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I still see people is just making sure that gzip is not turned on, or they assume that their CDN is automatically going to turn on gzip for them. Well, they don't. So just double check that as well. This happened to me a few days ago. I was trying to bank on Citibank. I hope nobody from Citibank is here. I don't want my account to be disabled. So I typed citibank.com on my browser and it took literally 70 seconds to load. That goes back to you, Steve, with your, your research on browser, latent browser timeouts. Anyway, so when I type citibank.com without the www, sometimes it took 20, 30 seconds to load. Why? Well, one of their servers in Houston is down, the other one in Dallas is up. You know, you should monitor those two things. Capacity. I love this one. My performance is great, tell me a customer. Yeah, 2 o'clock in the morning when nobody's using the site. Performance is the ability to deliver the same performance, the same levels of performance 24 hours a day, not at 2 o'clock in the morning. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon is also very important when your customers are trying to buy something. Or I'm using a big name CDN. Everything is fine. Well, you know, your CDN still needs to talk to your origin server. The red line going up and down, heartbeat style, which is always very bad in our business. You want flat lines in our business. Um, the origin couldn't handle the load of the, of the CDN they were using. You can't have just one server handling the origin. Third party. So, I, I want to thank Google for providing me with some material for this conference. Um, so last week, uh, a bunch of websites went down or were extremely slow to use, from Amazon to Walmart to, I'm sure, other websites in Europe. And the thing that caused an issue is a double click of Google that went down for like two hours. And that literally brought down major websites around the world. So I joked at Velocity New York that I, I was proud that I took down DoubleClick for three hours when I used to work there, but this time I had nothing to do with it, I promise. 
So anyway, so make sure that you make sure that you watch who you invite in your home, right? All these third parties that you put on your site, make sure that you check them out and you vet them. You wouldn't let anybody in your physical home. Make sure you do the same thing for your third party tags, okay? Thank you guys.